So it's thing. like Alice in Wonderland, but it actually has like a theme and it's yeah. Christmas space. It's so weird because like I never wanted a Nutcracker movie. Like I didn't think this is because they have like a lot of live action movies that they have to make, right? Yeah. I didn't think the Nutcracker was gonna be one of them, but I I'm mad that they're making it. But it's also hilarious enough that I think that they should. <laughs> like, it's just, like, so open-ended and who gives a shit. Why not? I feel that. I forgot Nutcracker was a thing. Yeah. I um, also did. That's a good point. I, like, I see this movie and I'm like, wait, that seems oddly familiar. <laughs> like a memory from a dream. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's cool. Because now it's just, like, Alice in Wonderland, but Christmas-themed without Johnny Depp. So yeah. That's a few pluses. But they got Morgan Freeman in there, which has got to be better, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he's got an eye patch, which I think takes one off. Why does he have an eye it's patch? Like a, it's like a three steps forward, one step back type of Why thing. Why would his character need an eye patch? I he's from the normal human realm. For probably. the mystery. It's for the mystery. It's for the mystery. Yeah. So if anybody doesn't know what you're talking about, I j- finally saw the Nutcracker in the Four Realms trailer, which apparently came out months ago. Nobody told me about it, though. Morgan Freeman goes to the girl who's like Alice in Wonderland, and he's like, it's Christmas Eve, a time of mystery, a time of a time of unexpected consequences. It's like, None no, of those. It's not. It's not. Yeah, that's not what Christmas Eve is. Yeah, no, it's, it's not about mystery. No, you open presents and you say happy birthday, Jesus. Yeah, and you, that's all you, Christmas is. Everybody has a pretty specific idea about what Christmas is going to yeah. be like. I mean, you, you get it. It's not going to have rat kings. I've, I've never once gone into Christmas and been like, "Whoa, this is such a surprise! <laughs> what is oh going God. on here?" You know what? That's a lie. I have what? So, um, it was like. It was a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I spent like all. I remember I was a sophomore in high school. Mm-hmm. I spent all like winter thinking my mom was gonna get me an iPhone for Christmas. Sure, and she was content to let me believe that <laughs> until <laughs> come Christmas I open my gifts mm-hmm. and it's a fucking toothbrush. Uh, it's like it's how, one of those. Was it just one toothbrush? It's one of those like expensive like electric toothbrushes sure. that are like oh you know this is like real like if I had been an adult I'd been like oh this is a really nice gift. Uh-huh. I was a child. Mm-hmm. It was like <laughs> she was like she was upset. She was like you don't appreciate it. And I'm like fuck no I don't appreciate it. It's a fucking toothbrush. <laughs> are you joking? My sister's the only one who got it. She was like I see wh- I see where you're at, Josh. <laughs> Because you're 15, and this is not a thing you can take to school and be like, look at what I got. It's, it's not something you can tell your friends about when they ask you, hey, yeah. what'd you get for Christmas? Meanwhile, I'm over here like, are you trying to give me, are you trying to tell me something? Is there, <laughs> should I be concerned? Like, what is this? You need this toothbrush. Specifically you. I bought this because of your condition. I was very upset. That's Fortunately, what... she realized her mistake and got me an iPhone before the winter break was over. Oh, that's nice. So... But I mean, I'll never forget. Realized her mistake. My brother was laughing his ass off. Uh, I was very upset. I uh, almost cried. That's really sad for everyone involved. Just Honestly, your mom because she thought she got you a nice gift, but it turned out to be wrong. You know what the worst part is though is mm. that I, th- I think I vaguely remember her picking up that toothbrush one day and saying she would get it for me as a Christmas gift. Uh huh. But I thought she was joking. <laughs> I can't stress enough how much I was like, she can't be serious. Jeez. No person could be this. You see, this is why I'm terrified of the act of gift giving, because I'm afraid something like that would happen, where like, I'm going to give something, somebody something they really probably would like. Turns out they hate it and wanted something completely different. Yeah. And now everybody's in a pickle. That's, that's the mystery of Christmas. That's why we stay Jewish in my family. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Flockcast. It's been a quite a bit, hasn't it? It's been a couple weeks. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a full two weeks. Two weeks, it's I gross. I missed you guys. Yes. Well, sort of. Yeah, a little bit. I'm Adam underscore, uh, DJ master of the Flock of Idiots. And I'm kind of shy, but pushing through it, Josh the Splash. <laughs> Uh, and in this podcast, we talk about movies and things we watch and pop culture stuff and whatnot. This week's a little bit special because we've been gone two weeks. We're going to do a movie roundup, Ooh. skip straight past the news, and really only focus on what we watch. Because I, I watched three movies. You were there for one of those movies. You watched three movies? Yeah. And I was only there for one? That's right. This week, we're going to talk about Pacific Rim 2. I refuse to call it Uprising. It's a garbage subtitle. Pacific Rim 2 Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, Pacific Rim 2... Uh, to Tom Brader, the new Tom Brader joint is out, yeah. and um, Love Simon, which I saw without you. Oh, that's I right. Saw all you of saw, those three you saw all those movies without me, and, well, then except I, and I wanted to see all of them. And yes. you were like, "You get one, Josh. You get one." I mean, you and I was like, "I'm busy. I have 
things. I mean, like, I didn't want to wait to see Tomb Raider. It's I didn't not give a my shit about fault. Tomb Raider. You're bored. <laughs> I didn't want to wait to see both Pacific Rim and Tomb Raider. I just God. wanted to see a movie, and you know though what? that movie's not important. I, you know what? I, a lot of Simon was important to me. You know what? It actually was pretty good. So I, I'll give you and, that one. And Tomb Raider, I have, I have a connection with. I watched both the movies, Angelina Jolie. Yeah. I played the games as a kid. I have not seen the other the the. the Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider movies. They're they're actually they're they're pretty cool once mm. you like like they're they're the they're the exact type of video game movies that you want mm-hmm. where they're stupid mm-hmm. but the action makes up for it. I'm sure every corner of the way. It's like holy shit that was so cool. That's really interesting. You know what? It's probably what the first Pacific Rim was to most people. I'm almost sure that's correct. Yeah. Do you want to start talking about Pacific Rim two? Mm. Um, give it a better subtitle than Uprising. Um, Pacific Rim two. Don of God, Pacific Rim Kai, Kaiju Catastrophe. <laughs> that one's all right. Pacific Rim Two: Race to Mount Fuji. Yeah, that's good. Pacific Rim Two: <laughs> Back in Action. Ba- back, back. Is that the Looney Tunes Back in Action? Yeah. That's good. Uh, so let's go spoiler free first. And then oh we'll no, go, got we it. Go spoilers. Go Pacific for it. Rim Two: Sins of the Father. Sins of the Father. Oh, because it's yeah, John Boyega yeah, yeah, and his yeah, daddy's yeah, Idris Ilja. Uh, Idris Ilja. <laughs> I know Ilja. what I said. Um, so yeah, this movie. You, why don't you just tell us what this movie's about? Because you haven't seen the first Pacific Rim. I have not I seen have. the first Pacific Rim. J- just tell us what this movie's um, about. Actually, you know what? Tell us what the first movie was about. So just going, guess. So going into this movie completely blind, I'm mm. gonna guess the first movie. It was just a live action mech anime. So you've got these two guys, you've got these two these 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 monsters, these Godzilla creatures that they call kaiju, mm-hmm. which I don't know how that word was accepted or created. Mm. Such a such a weird word. Why not just call them monsters? Uh, kaiju is the Japanese word for monster. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. And Jaeger is the like Russian word or German word for like guardian Giant or something. Fucking robot. Yeah, it's just like big ass mechs. Uh, it's something like that. So yeah. Okay, I feel that. Uh-huh. Alright, so they fight these these Godzilla creatures called Kaiju mm-hmm. which literally just they come, they Godzilla and they leave. Mm-hmm. You guys remember the first Godzilla that's all he did? Yeah. He just came, fucked shit up and left. There wasn't a plot. No, there wasn't a plot. Yeah. And so they counteract this the world government I assume. Yeah, the world comes the world, together. The world comes together because I can't. I Shares can't say their... it's just American because mm. they have accents and they speak languages and stuff. Yeah. So the world government comes together and they build these giant fucking robots. Except they're too big, <gasps> so they have to be piloted by not one but two people who have to be compatible. And so they get into the robot and they do this thing called a mental handshake. Where they see all of their memories from all their past lives, which is really fucked up if you did something just super embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Like, what if, like, can I, like, can I see every time you wet your bed as a kid? Yes, you can. Is that a thing I can see? Probably. Do I, do I know how? Do I know every like awkward boner you had in class? Oh, absolutely. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. <laughs> so this and that's and that's that. And if you're a man or woman, it's probably weird. You see, you see everything yep. about just see, just see all of puberty. <laughs> Everyone just has the. Like, every time they go through that awkward moment, they have to be like, so this is awkward. We have to go through each other's puberties. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be fine. I'm becoming a man. You're becoming a woman. It'll mm. be okay. We'll get through this. Uh, the thing about this movie, though, is whenever they mental handshake, literally all they see is their parents dying. <laughs> every single fucking time. It's just like, I don't want a mental handshake. You should. Come on, trust me. Oh, my God. Your parents died? Weird. That's it. Every time. That's the just, thing that they're hiding. I don't want to. I don't want to do it. I don't want to. I don't want to. Quit being a bitch. Uh, Everybody's watch, parents are dead. What, Literally every- everyone. <laughs> it's hilariously oh ironic. Uh, anyway, well, continue. What's the plot of the first movie? Um, so just, just like, what, what's the what's the goal? What's the, what's the end so game? So the goal is to beat up the giant monsters and and close the rift that they come out of. The underwater Cthulhu rift that 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 opened underwater mm-hmm. to another dimension, the the dark dimension, if you will. Okay, you nailed it. That's exactly what the first movie's about. Did I really? Yeah, you, you hardly miss anything. Cool. Idris Elba's the cool badass veteran guy, um, and the two leads are forgettable. So that's it. You did it. Oh, and Charlie Day and um, other guy who has the cane have like a fun. Yeah. scientific relationship. He's like, and Ron Perlman's in it. And Ron I don't Perlman's know, in it? I don't know what he does. That's what? I don't remember. I just remember he's just he's Hellboy from the universe. He just pops in the roof too. He's yeah. like, ah, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I have a little arm and a buffer arm. <laughs> so what's this movie about? What's what's up, up doodling is about? So, so this movie is set ten years after the first movie. Mm-hmm. The war is over. The rift has been closed. 
Ghost. <gasps> and so you have, um, you've got John Boyega, who plays Idris Elba's son in this movie. Hmm. After, spoiler alert for the first movie real quick, Idris Elba died in the first movie. Yep, And that's, true. that's the weight that he carries on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. Also, I guess, um, him and the girl from the first movie are brother and sister. Yeah. So, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, Idris Elba, nev- I don't think he mentions in the first movie that he has a son, but Mako, who's, like, one of the lead pilots in the first movie, mm. is, like, his surrogate daughter. But it's not, like, it didn't, I don't remember it being that, like, Idris Elba specifically said, like, yeah, I raised her as a daughter. I just thought they had, like, a relationship. Like, yeah. you're kind of like a daughter to me. But I guess he's that's literally his daughter. Yeah. And he also has a son that he never mentioned. And this movie's about that son. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Want to continue with the plot? Um, what else is it about? Uh, well, just just generalize does, it. No spoilers. So, he, he, they, so he, does, he does the Star Trek thing where he gets, he gets caught up for something stupid. And then there's a general that's like, your father was the best damn pilot I've ever seen. Oh, you shit. should be like him. It's just Star Trek. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, so, it's just Star Trek. Yeah, so um, so he ends up going back to the academy as a ranger mm-hmm. to train a new generation of cadets for a war that is over. But is it over? <gasps> Who knows? Is it over? We'll find out. It's, is but... everything calm? Or is there an uprising on the horizon? Oh my god, is there a... Horizon would have been alright, right? Oh, yeah. Pacific Rim Horizon. Good. Pacific Rim 2, Horizon. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, it, it, we could workshop it. Yeah, so this movie is about new kids. So, first first thing about this movie, did John Boyega actually need to be Idris Elba's son? He did not. He did not. Not in the slightest. It comes up a couple times where he's like, my dad was Idris Elba. He was kind of an asshole towards me. Yeah. He was also a hero. That's it. They don't... <laughs> Not much else. See, well, that's the thing about mech animes. Uh-huh. A lot of mech animes focus on a main character whose dad, for whatever reason, is either dead or too busy to pay any attention to him because right. he's off saving the world, hmm. like, using other mech animes. So in that part, they actually kind of nail it. Yeah, they did it. So it's like he has a bad relationship with his father, his father's dead, there's no way to reconcile. Hmm. Yeah, and his, his dad thinks he was a shitty pilot and never deserved to be in a Jaeger. Yeah. Which was really mean of him yeah. to say. God damn. Like, Just like, hey, I get that you're misunderstood. It's hard to live up to a legacy. Just do anything else. <laughs> just, just become a businessman or something. Yeah. I'm sure you're good at something, kid. No, he, he was just a really bad dad. And never talked about his son to yeah. anyone. <laughs> I think he was ashamed of his son. Yeah, he, he really didn't like him. Um, there's also the girl lead whose name I forget, you know, um, she, she's just a younger kid who yeah. built her own Jaeger. Her character name is Amara, and she built her own Jaeger. That's right. Which is like, imagine comparing a toddler to the size of a regular human. Mm-hmm. That's the size of her Jaeger compared to an actual Jaeger. Yeah, it's, it's a one-man Jaeger that she built from scraps, and she calls it Scrapper because she's not good at naming things. <laughs> <laughs> she called Scrapper because she's a 12 year old girl and they're fucking stupid yeah. anyway in the beginning John Boyega is just like a he he, he like sells people like Jaeger parts Not and also cars yeah. for hot sauce he trades things <laughs> but like the worst things I honestly forgot he lives in like a, a town that was destroyed by the kaiju and that some people still live in. And he mm. lives in a half of a mansion that got destroyed. He squats a in a half A pretty fucking sweet deal. Yeah. But, he, like, all he does for, like, a living and to get by is trade shit with other people. So he traded, like, a car for, like, a bunch of hot sauce. Which I guess is a hot commodity in their world. <laughs> what were the other things? Was one of them Cheetos? Yeah, I... Th- Here's the thing. I'm almost certain that everything you traded could have been put to better use yeah. by him instead of just trading it for, like, soda and bread. <laughs> he said something really stupid. I think one of them was, like, Twinkies or something. It was like, and you gotta trade your cars for your Twinkies. Oh, no, he was like, but I'll be damned if I don't have my hot sauce. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, something like that. It was weird. And then he, like, kisses, a, like, a bottle up. He's like, mwah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's hot sauce. Yeah. But John Boyega, like, this is, like, the only other thing I've seen in him besides uh, Star Wars. Yeah. I'm and it's a completely different character. I'm pretty impressed. Yeah. Yeah. He does a good accent. 
he d- he does a good he does a good like that's his actual accent. Is that his real accent? Yeah, I knew John Boyega is British. Okay, is it just Alba really British? It was also British. Perfect casting. Yes, the hair. That's what I'll call perfect. <laughs> he does a great cast. accent. That's that's just his voice. Yeah. Well, then he does a great American accent. Yeah, he you does a pretty American yeah. accent. But um, yeah, I mean, he does a good new character. He th- this one, he's a sexy kind of fly guy. Yeah. But um, who, who's like a who's like a rebel kind of dude and. And in Star Wars, he's... A he, sexy kind of fly guy who's like a rebel kind of dude. He, I gotcha. He's the book-reading nerd with glasses in Star Wars. I haven't seen Star Wars. No, I'm um, yeah. He's really cool in this one. He's like, he's the action-packed hero. And in Star Wars, he's... A Jedi. <laughs> he's a, I want to say Jedi Sith. Sith Master. I want to I say Space Samurai. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but as as a whole, what did you think of this movie? I, I know I'm probably rushing into that because we didn't really cover the rest of the cast. Yeah. But it's good just to get it out there. What did you think of it? In seeing it, I haven't seen the first one, so I thought this one was fun. Yes. It was all right. It was it was fun while it lasted. Uh-huh. Charlie Day is pretty funny when he is funny. Uh-huh. Um, um, I don't know. The acting was pretty good. Uh, there was this one part that's just super fucking like... <laughs> So these, so the character we're talking about, Amara, who built the scrapper, right? Yeah. She has this one character named Victoria and their rivals. Yeah, she's she's a Russian girl, and yeah. the first day she gets to practice with the with the real trainees, the Russian girl's like, "Fuck you! I don't like yeah. you. We're gonna be rivals, but then we're not gonna be later, Ooh, or I'm gonna yeah. die." Yeah. It's one of those two things, and no one cares it's about it. Hilarious. So yeah. one of the characters gives her a thing, and it's like, "Oh, talk Russian to her." <laughs> it, it, it'll, she'll show you respect and yeah. so she speaks Russian to her and she's like fuck you and they get into a fight uh-huh. and it turns out Amara is a scrapper <laughs> so she puts her in a fucking hold and she's almost out until they get caught by their higher ups and then I guess after that point she respects her because because <laughs> she kicked her ass yeah it's it's hilarious so literally there's like a there's a when they first meet she's like I heard your little Jaeger got taken out by a big Jaeger and she's like well you should know that I had that Jaeger on the ropes for most of the time and she's like yeah well bigger is better and I'm like and you're like that's not okay. that's not the way humans talk, and she's, that's not a good response. <laughs> she says it with her heavy Russian accent, so it makes you feel like she doesn't know English that well. Yeah. So she probably thought of something in Russian a lot better, but she was like in English, it's just like bigger is better, and she's like, okay, yeah, okay, good advice. Good. Next okay. time I'll build a bigger yeah. one. Okay, I guess. great. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go go find my bed now. Yeah. Yeah. So you like this movie? I thought it was fine. I don't know if I'm getting like really just tired as a human i didn't like it like even like i mean like the robot fights were fine but i was just kind of bored because i knew everything that was going to happen and it was really by the books and the writing kind of sucked that's because you watched the first movie no i don't think it is i just figured like okay this is gonna happen this is gonna happen and these two characters are gonna hate each other but then they're gonna like each other and I don't mean the, the the two we were talking about. I'm talking about the other two, oh, which yeah. is John Boyega and a guy who looks like the main character from the last movie, but I guess he wasn't. It's just, and this corporation's probably building evil things, and maybe they aren't. Yeah. Ooh, who's to say? I love how they almost like get into a fight like the first few scenes, and by the end of it, he's like calling him brother. It's yeah. like, yeah, brother, <laughs> I believe in you. You can do it. You're my best friend, and I love you. <laughs> uh, man, like for for the movie's credit. I didn't see the villain coming, but I also didn't like the villain. So I don't know, man. This movie was just kind of, just kind of happened for me. Like if the if like the kaiju actually blew up the planet, I'd be like, "Ha! All right. <laughs> That's fine." Uh, and they set up a sequel that I don't really care for. And I don't think it's going to happen. They set up a love triangle that goes absolutely nowhere. They do set up a love triangle with a character that I've never seen. She wasn't in the last movie. And she I don't know why like she was in this movie. 20 minutes of this movie. It was like way less than that. She was probably in like 10 minutes Yeah, of it. probably. Yeah, she wasn't a pilot either. She was just kind of works there. Yeah, it was weird. Like they're leaving for the final battle and mm. she comes up to both of them. And you think that like so for the whole movie, John Boyega was trying to get this girl, mm-hmm. and his partner is like she's off limits. Mm-hmm. And so you think, oh maybe there's a thing between them. So at the at the start of the big battle, she comes up to both of them, and she goes up to John Boyega's partner, and she's like, "Don't die, soldier!" Kisses him on the cheek. 
Mm. And then she's the exact same thing John Boyega. She goes <laughs> up to him and she's like, don't die, soldier. Kisses on the cheek. And they're just like, you know I'm still here, right? <laughs> like, I just saw you do this with other man. I'm seeing, like, they're just there. God, it, that scene was so weird because they were both like, well, that was confusing. They're just dumbfounded. Anyway, like, and then they just leave. <laughs> yeah, and like, then she's never seen again. It's gotta be against the rules. You can't do that. You can't. You can't. That's, that's messed up. But, uh, I don't know. It, it was like, <clears throat> I knew that everything was gonna happen. I knew they'd be fine. And I, if anybody died, I wouldn't have cared. And I wasn't attached to the characters, even though they were probably good actors. Just the writing was pretty shitty. Like, this whole story structure was just kind of happening. And, like, the monsters were fine. And the fights were fine. They, these guys don't give a shit about property damage at all. Oh, no, no. There was a, one of the Jaegers, I think it was Gypsy Danger, has like a... Has like a magnet gun, oh yeah and he throws actual buildings at a kaiju and i'm just like come on dude these are buildings this is hard to repair it's, it's not easy it's gonna take them decades <laughs> oh jeez. Ugh. so it was also 10 years later and charlie day looks exactly the same yeah and everyone looks exactly the same i think mako looks exactly the same and the the guy with the cane looks exactly the same. It's kaiju blood. Kaiju blood. They all drink a bunch they of all, kaiju blood. They all drink kaiju blood and now they're ageless. <laughs> uh, yeah, I it's just this they spent a lot of money on this movie. I'm not gonna remember it. Mm. In like a few weeks, a few months. Quick, what's the plot now? Oh my god, I cannot tell you. <laughs> uh anyway. Give this movie some kind of rating. So I would give this movie, uh... If it's on Netflix, it's probably nice to have on in the background. Yeah, while you're I, doing would, something. I would give this movie, if it's on Netflix, probably put it in your queue. Yeah. And and just, like, be like, oh, hey, that's been on my queue. I'm gonna watch it. Later. Nah. Later. Later. <laughs> and then just realize you have a bunch of... Just like cake wars that are queued up, yeah, and just be like, this, this is this is much more exciting, <laughs> and just binge some cake wars, people. Yeah, <laughs> I I really think I probably would have enjoyed this way more if I was like half paying attention to it, like I'm doing something else. Like, oh, they're fighting now. Cool, <laughs> nice. All right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what else? Anything else? One time, I mean, do you want to go into spoilers in this? I don't think we have to. Okay. I'm just going to say one time they were supposed to evacuate a city because they had a lot of pre-notice. Oh, They didn't yeah. give them nearly enough notice. They, they, there were still people in the streets. It was funny. Oh people were God. running from, from the kaiju and like a bunch of them got squished. And then the Jaeger show up and they're like, don't worry, everybody's in bunkers yeah. in, the, in, in the underground. And I'm just like, some of them no, weren't. No, they are not. A lot of it's, them weren't. It's actually hilarious because you see a bunch of people run into an underground shelter. You see it close because like, it's at capacity. Yeah. And then it comes down. And the other people who just didn't make it in, they start running to another one. They just get stomped on. <laughs> And it's just like, you're clearly lying. It's, you can't just lie to me like that. I don't know if it's because I'm be I'm getting older or something, but, like, I'm really concerned about property damage in these <laughs> kinds of movies. Like, there's a bit where the gypsy... He's not Gypsy Danger anymore. He's Gypsy Avenger. He uses his magnet gun to grab a bunch of cars and throws it at another robot. And I'm just like, there were probably fucking people in yeah. those cars. It's not an evacuated city. This is, like, a very populated city. Several thousand people probably died in this. Yep. Dear God. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> you remember she's like, yeah, but my drones got, like, passed. So yeah. in the end, it was a good thing. And Charlie Day is just like... Oh, shit, she's a bitch. I guess if you squint your eyes and look at it in the dark, <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, like a bunch of people dies. And yeah, she's like, I guess it's fine. Like, if you my look at this in a certain type of way, it's a good thing. And Charlie Day is like... Yeah. Yeah, if you look at it in the dark with your eyes squinted, head cocked to the side. <laughs> it's so weird, because the yeah. Shao Corporation's, like, plan... Mm. Was to decommission like actual pilots for Jaegers yeah. and just have drones take out like Kaiju if it ever happened. Yeah. And when she reveals this plan, all the soldiers who would be pilots of the Jaegers were like, Boo! Yeah. Blasphemy! Humans drive the robots! <laughs> it's cooler! Yeah, it Everybody cool. boos her after she says it. I'm just like, you know, you guys' lives are yeah, at stake. Yeah, you, know you guys right? can like still do the job, but like. <laughs> From like a place where you won't from die here. Very safe distance. Like like they had like people die in this in Jaeger fights and like Jones probably would have really helped in that case. <laughs> no. 
Try, I will say that Charlie Day has the best time this entire film. Uh, he was pretty good in the last movie too. I, yeah. I, I, I don't like the role that they gave him, where mm. like now he's kind of an asshole and shit. Yeah. But because he was more fun in the last one, like him and the him and the guy with the cane have a better dynamic, right. where they're just kind of partners and they're doing science with each other. And you get a little bit of this movie, but. I don't know. He he seems yeah. to be having fun with it. I'll have to see the first one, but he does. Yeah. He has like the best line. Like they're trying to save. Well, this they at one point they're like running, trying to hijack the lab. Yeah. And Chide comes with with a gun. And he's like, "Get out of the lab now! Or I will shoot you! I swear to God, I will shoot you twice!" <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> was, I love it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Ah, uh, man. I'm probably not gonna remember this movie because yeah. it wasn't even like bad in a way that was funny. It was just like average. And average movies really tire me out. Yeah. Speaking of average movies, do you want me to tell you about Tomb Raider? <gasps> okay. I was gonna yes? gasp. Yeah, the new Tom Raider joint is out. Uh, a, a big old reboot of the last Tom Raider series. Mm-hmm. Um, it was blindingly average it was completely middle of the road in the sense that like the actors were good and they had a good time the movie mm. itself boring man yeah. all the set pieces were boring a lot of the set pieces were like well once they get to the island where the big bad mystery happens it was just bland it was it was just like outside it's, yeah. it's normal outside stuff yeah they have this part where Laura Croft is just like <laughs> mm. like She's just like they're having this conversation outside, mm-hmm. but it's like they know there's a doomsday like thing about to happen. Yeah, and like they're just chilling. Yeah, and I don't know why. Ah, uh, yeah. I should I should mention the plot real quick. <laughs> is that thing that happened in the movie? Is, is is it? I didn't see the movie. Oh, that's you're, right. You're nodding your head like I was there with you. I'm making a joke. That probably could have happened. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it did. I'm psychic. Good job. I'm proud. Have a you. So, the plot of the movie, Laura Croft is a, is a girl who's from a very rich Bruce Wayne-style corporation family mm. whose dad is the owner of this corporation that does business. What kind of business? Who's to say? <laughs> anyway, her dad goes missing 10 years ago, and now she is a 20-something ragamuffin who doesn't want to accept her father's inheritance because if she does that, she basically admits that his, her dad is very dead, and she doesn't want to accept that. So she's trying to make it her in her own in in the real world and and doing weird bicycle jobs and shit until <laughs> she's a postmates. Yeah, she, she literally postmates? is. Yeah, she, I'm not even joking. She has a bicycle and she like delivers food. Yeah, oh, I think it's hilarious. postmates. Yeah. Oh no, I have to watch it. Yeah. God damn it! But um, why? Just because she's a postmate? No, I still actually just want to see the movie. Okay, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, but one day she finds a clue. Uh, that her father was into some weird shit. Like, Not in that like, kind of weird okay, shit. Okay, he's making sense. And, and she, she, he was investigating a cursed island with a secret, secret power. And when she finds out about this island that is haunted by an evil Japanese princess, she decides it's the best idea to go to that island, gra- grab some, some, some guy who owns a ship from Hong Kong, drive to that island to see what happened to her daddy. But then she gets there... And she gets in over her head when an evil corporation stops her. And maybe the the evil could be real. Did I pitch it really well? What? Did I nail that? Is it an evil corporation but not really? No, wait. Yeah, it's an evil like, corporation. It's an evil corporation, but maybe the evil could be real. No, I, like, <laughs> no, I mean the evil curse of oh, the Oh, the island. curse. Okay. Yeah, the curse might be real. And they seem to be after the curse, so there's clearly something. Ooh. And then she, she discovers the mystery and becomes a Tom Brader. End of movie. Yay! <laughs> so this movie... Like, first of all, the, the actress who plays uh, Tomb Raider, Laura Tomb Raider Croft herself, very good. Alicia Vikander. Ooh, Alicia Vikander. I believe that's her name. I, well, I know that's her name, but I just don't know how to pronounce it. She was the evil robot in Ex Machina. Ooh. She did great. Um, she's really good as Tomb Raider. Don't <laughs> sandwich, you fucking kidding me. I swear to God. You know what? I'm just going to say it. We paused the episode because I had to look up her name. Josh is like, can I make a sandwich? And I was like, sure, make your sandwich. And I was joking because you're in the middle of a podcast. How am I supposed to know that? You made a full sandwich. <laughs> All right. Jesus. I'm hungry. This is my house, Adam. This is breakfast time for me. You just eat the sandwich in the middle of a podcast. You know what? You know what? I don't, I don't give a damn. No. Um, <laughs> He's eating no. a sandwich. Mm, and he yeah. seems to enjoy it. Oh, right. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah.
I'm very proud of you. Except I'm not. <laughs> you ruined it. <laughs> this podcast is over now. Click. I'm kidding. Uh, anyway, back to Tom Brady. Yeah, I'm not done talking about Tom Brady. Um, yeah, anyway, she did great. Alicia Vikander, she was really good as a lead. I want to see more of her. E- either in, like, another Tomb Raider movie, because I think she could really do well in that. Or just in any movie, because I think she's funny. <laughs> well, not funny. She's just really cool. Because uh, she's fit. She is muscular. She has like a six pack. It's crazy. She needs to be in more action roles. And this was okay. a good one. This was a good one. Uh, Daniel Wu was in it. He was Ooh. he was the boat driver and in sidekick type. Uh, he's the guy. You know him, right? He's the guy from uh, yeah. Into the Badlands. Or is it just called the Badlands? It's it's Into the Badlands. Okay, Into the Badlands. Into the Badlands. I'm pretty sure. Into, okay. Yeah, Into the Badlands. Whatever. Yeah, he was good in it. I also haven't. I actually haven't seen him in anything before, but he was have good. Have you seen it. Into the Badlands? I have not. It's good. You should oh, watch it. It's got sweet. cool action. Yeah, it's on Netflix, right? Uh, I don't know. I could check it out. I think it might be on Netflix. Yeah, and uh, Walton Goggins <clears throat> was was the was the main <laughs> that's not villain. A name. You know, you know who Walton Goggins is. Right? No, that's not a name. In uh, Maze Runner Three, he was the guy who was missing most of his face. Oh shit! That guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a good actor. Yeah, he's he really commits to whatever he does. And in a believable way. And in this no, one, uh, he was a cool villain. Um, he was an interesting one where, like, he's not justified, but he's desperate. And, like, you can kind of get why he wants to just get this shit done. <laughs> like, he's working for this Trinity company. Mm. And he's not allowed. Like, they literally will not pick him up from the island. <laughs> no, yeah. Unless he finds what they're looking for. They're like, dude, I just... I'm trying to go home. Yeah. Like... Exactly. I have a wife and kids. No, exactly. Also, That's, my bonus is on the line. <laughs> it's actually exactly that. Where he he's been there for seven years. What the he, fuck? He hasn't been able to find it, and he's so fucking desperate that he's just been like killing people who haven't found it. I'm just so fucking done. Yeah, I'm done. Every single time he's in like a firefight or something, he's just like, just listen to me, and we can just go home. <laughs> he's just really desperate to see his family again, and like. So it's not justified, but it's also like not like he's pure evil for no reason. Yeah. He he's just really exhausted. And he's just can't deal with any shit humans he just have wants to deal a with. Nap. With that being said, he probably could have just called them and say, Hey, we found it and then just like when they came there in the helicopter, he could have just held them up at gunpoint and just like, Take me home. Mm. I'm very sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Take me home. I've, I've had enough of the beach for one lifetime. <laughs> yeah, he was a cool villain. He didn't like have like a master plan or anything. He was just evil. He was fine. Um, uh, they, they, I thought it was going to be a one for one like remake of the video game. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. I'm sorry. I'm just thinking like. What was that? He's like, I have a dog. <laughs> it's been seven years. Who the fuck is feeding my dog? <laughs> feeding my dog. Oh, he's definitely dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He just wants to see his family. Mm. His, his poor family. But um, I thought it was going to be a remake for the game. It's not. The game has like way cooler set pieces and diverse <laughs> locations. This one's like a desert jungle. Mm. It's really gray and boring. Like they, Story-wise, is it the game? No, I don't think so. I think they completely switched up the ending. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much of it, but um, they're just pretty huge elements that made the first game special that weren't in this movie. Oh, I know, um, yeah. Triangle especially, titties. Yeah. yeah, that's right. No, tr- Not even a reference towards triangle titties. Not even just like, ah, these clams have snuck into my <laughs> shirt overnight. Hilarious, <laughs> but get out. <laughs> Come on, something. Like... <laughs> the special elements that made the game unique just gone. Why do you have triangle titties? Because I put cardboard in my sh- shirt for warmth. Let me get them out. It's funny. Anyway. Um, but especially, they really changed the character um, of Laura Croft from the game to this one. Mm. And it makes sense, and it's actually pretty interesting why they did it. Um, in the video game, Laura is a lot more desperate and a lot more, like, uh, sad and crying and just, like, really doesn't know how to handle the situation. Mm-hmm. She's much more just, like, a normal girl who's thrown into, like, a perilous situation. In this one... She is all. She kind of has that, but she's way more capable of dealing with it. Like she, she's way more uh, bold. She's braver. She's way more physically capable. And I, the reason they did that is because if you're playing a video game, you want to relate to the character. Yeah. If you if you were thrown into an island situation, you would understand that she'd be crying and like pl- 
screaming for help and shit. Because you'd be that same kind of desperate. And you want to see that growth in the character. But in a movie, you want a role model. You want someone where they are braver than you would be. And they're, that kind of makes you brave in a sense. Yeah. Because you're not controlling them. You're watching them do it. And that's kind of an interesting distinction. I, I like that change. Where if you're making a video game character, you have to make it more relatable. Anyway, the plot as a whole... <clears throat> really meandering like it didn't kick off until way later like she went to hong kong for a bit and somebody <laughs> stole her backpack that that lasted for like 15 minutes <laughs> it was a long time um but once they're on the island shit happens a twist josh a little bit of a twist there's a twist in it a, a, a twist <laughs> they can't see you do the twist okay. yeah um they can't see you do it either yeah that's true uh they, they did a little twist um and it was fine didn't change much it certainly was a completely different from the game um and i thought it was going to be i i, I kind of want to spoil it but since you haven't seen it i'm not going to the end no, was spoil it really i don't give a Fuck. All right, I'll swear. Jason Bateman dies, everyone. That's, that's right. Jason Bateman is in fact dead. He was the tomb, I keep and trying he was not raided. To make that joke. <laughs> it's fine. I, like I don't it. know. I keep trying not to make. As it. long as you give a real reason how he died, <laughs> it's funny. Okay. Probably. Probably not. Anyway, uh, I'll put a time code because I'm going to spoil some stuff. So if oh, you want to, I'll skip the time code. Yeah. Okay. You skip. Really? All right. Now go. Do you actually want? Go ahead. Just go. Really? Just say it spoilers. Okay. Well, I'm going to start spoilers. La, 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 no, la, la, stop it. La, la. I didn't start yet. I'm going to start spoilers out now, and you can just click on the bottom, and you can skip to the end where we talk about probably Love, Simon, or something. Um, yeah, so spoilers. Um, her dad's alive. Oh! Yeah. God damn it! Very, very early-ish to when she gets onto the island, she just finds her dad in a cave. <laughs> and he was just chilling there. Uh, it was oh, actually pretty... Son of a bitch. Yeah, it was actually pretty funny. In the beginning, um, the reason... The way that he... F- she finds out that he's on this island mm-hmm. is that he find or she finds his secret lair um which is near the mansion in a tomb mm-hmm. in the mansion like her bat cave is also a tomb mm-hmm. that's interesting but um she, she is the tomb yeah <laughs> yeah so she finds the tape where's like if you're watching this i'm dead and he's just like all right all i need you to do take the box that says hirokoki or whatever burn it don't even look inside and she's like i want to see it so she opens it and finds, like, the island he was looking for. And he t- she takes all the stuff in the box and goes to the island. And all of it gets into the hands of the bad guy. <laughs> Every single bit. <laughs> and, and then, like, she finds her dad. And he's just like, well, thank God you burnt that box. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, so fuck me. about that. <laughs> Funny story, Pops. <laughs> I actually gave it to the person you specifically didn't want in the hands of. Oh, God. Good for me. Oh, uh, you have no idea. I'm mad. Yeah. We have So, when we saw the first trailer for this this thing, it has in the trailer the part where she's looking at the tape and is like, Laura, if you're watching this, I'm dead. Mm. That inspired an entire sketch we're trying to make. Yep. Where it's like, oh, if you're watching this, I'm dead, but he's not really dead. Now that I know he's not really dead, I'm mad. Yeah, I'm suing. <laughs> That's our intellectual property. You can't be. You can't not be dead now. Yeah, it's true. Uh, but um, what else? The ending was kind of disappointing, but interesting, but in a disappointing way. Mm. They get to the tomb. The dad is convinced that magic is real and that the evil empress is going to wake up and kill the world because, according to legend, uh, the princess has the power of death, and if she touches anybody. They die. So that's just don't let her touch you. Exactly. So they get to the tomb, and there's kind of a thing where, like, magic isn't real, isn't it? And Laura figures out. Do you actually want me to spoil this for you? I mean, you're already spoiling. Do you? Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, Laura, Laura, Laura figures out that everything that's magic in the past had some root in reality. So the princess was not magic and cursed with death. She just had a horrific disease, and she was a carrier for it, where if she touches anybody, they die of a horrible disease, and that's the only way you can spread it. Like, instantly? Yes. Well, not instantly. They just kind of, like, catch it like they're zombies, but then they just die. Um, And the evil corporation wants to weaponize this, and that's why they wanted to find it. 
Mm. So the whole thing, I guess, in the future of Tomb Raiders is going to be is that there are myths that have a root in science that this evil corporation wants to weaponize somehow. I don't like and that. Laura Croft wants to stop it. I don't like that. I did want an evil boss battle at the end with I, a magical genie or whatever. Don't you? I absolutely did. She also had like an army of zombies. Yeah. They're, they're, oh God, it was so funny. It, instead of like an army of like soldiers or something, it was like a, it was like her army of housewives or mm-hmm. something. It was silly. It was something like that. Wait, were they like from the dead or like? Yeah, no, they were just like army of handmaidens. They were just corpses. They didn't come back from the dead. They were all lined up like they would be because they were all in like tombs right next to the main one. Oh, but she didn't fight them? No. So, in the original Laura Croft, which is on Netflix, the original Tomb Raider. Good, I'll watch it. There's a scene where she fights a giant, like, three-headed statue. That sounds great. It's legit. It's like a thing out of a video game. That sounds so much fun. And it's amazing, and so now I'm slightly disappointed. Yeah, I mean, I was too, because I think at the end of the last video game, the rebooted one, um, she had to fight, like, an actual ghost demon, and the way she kills it is by grabbing a gun grabbing a second gun and shooting it with those two guns. <laughs> and I was like, that's its only weakness. You that's just shoot it with bullets. Everything. Damn it. Uh, but that didn't happen in this movie. Uh, uh, it, it, it was... Tomb Raider 101. You grab a gun. Mm-hmm. You grab a second gun. Uh-huh. Fucking unload. Unload with those two guns that you now have. Uh, so yeah, that's it. It wasn't magic after all. It was a disease. Cool. Yeah. What is that? That's the theme song from like Disney movies. I like it. When they open up. <laughs> yeah, so they set up a sequel, obviously, where she is now the Tomb Raider. She buys her two guns from an actual store. Are you serious? It's, it's in the trailer where she's like, wow, this is a pretty good gun. I'll take two. And that's the end. She um, does like a, they do like a background check. They're like, yeah, okay, so it's like seven days to process. Yeah. Um, come back in a week. <laughs> Probably. So, and that's the end. In the end, she's now the Tomb Raider, and she's going to stop this evil corporation, Trinity, from unlocking secrets of the past that could be weaponized. That's amazing. I wanted to get a superhero costume with a mask and a cape and just a TR on her chest. <laughs> she, that'd be cool. I am the Tomb Raider. Uh... That'd be this fun. Like a grappling hook and shit. I am that raider. I will raid this tomb. For justice. For justice. And also gold. <laughs> uh, anyway, the people who skipped the spoilers are back now. I will rate this movie an average, just like the last one. Just like Pacific Rim 2. It's completely average. It was fine. I'm probably not going to watch it again. Or remember it. That's it. It happened. It definitely happened. <laughs> I, I was there. I know. But like... <laughs> but was I? Was I really... I will rate this movie a on on I will give this movie a if you want to watch a really good Tomb Raider movie, Laura Croft Tomb Raider is on Netflix. You should check it out. Is that one good? It's good. Oh, okay. Like I said, it's it's like it's like the first Mortal Kombat movie. Okay. Where like the plot and story are kind of like whatever, but it's got such good action sequences. It's like oh, this is so cool. like every five minutes I'll do something. It's like oh my god, that's so cool! <laughs> I will. Check. I forgive it for everything. <laughs> That sounds like fun. I'm probably gonna check it out. So that's it. Yeah. That's that's it for Tomb Raider. Do you want Do you want me to talk about Love Simon? I mean, I'll do just you, go brief. Do you want to talk about? I Love do Simon? want to talk about Love okay. Simon. Well, I'll talk about it briefly. because there's not that much I want to talk about. Get out of my house. Okay, bye. Yeah. You talk about Love Simon then. So Love Simon, um, really cool movie. Um, it's about this this. Um, so you guys know that movie Simon Says. Um, I so do know that this movie. is it's it's a horror film based around that game so you got this guy named simon and he's like simon says love simon and then he falls in love with them and then he's like simon says there can only be one so everyone starts killing each other it's really cool yeah that's yeah definitely less, go see it it lasts for a lot longer than you thought it would like yeah. it's like a two and a half hour movie just, really? just them killing each other oh, just, yeah there's <laughs> nothing but slaughtering it's just, it's just it's just it's just pure gore and disgust it's horrific god but, I, I vomited after but good <laughs> 10 out of 10. A1. Uh, anyway, Love, Simon is based on a book. Uh, I actually... Did I tell you that I... I'm sure I did, that I got... I read the script for it before it was even, like, the trailer or, like, even in production. Are you serious? Yeah. You never told me that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to be good. I also just skimmed it. Because, like, in the beginning, like, there's narration. Yeah. And, like, straight from book to movies shouldn't do narration. Yeah. But they always do because they don't have a choice. And I was like, ah, groan, and I just didn't want to read the rest. Mm-hmm. 
But um, yeah, it was it was really good, man. You should it's definitely really watch it. I'll probably watch it again if you want to see it. Let's go. Let's go it, now. It's it's really relatable coming of age story, like just for everyone. It just because there's a line in the trailer and in the movie where he's just like, just you know, being true to yourself in front of everyone is terrifying because what if the world doesn't like you? Like it's hard to show yourself to the world, and yeah. it's true. And this was really emotional and really well done. And, like, I'm sure it's going to relate to a lot of people and, like, really help them out. Because coming out's probably not an easy thing to yeah. do at all. Definitely I, not. Yeah, even, like, Simon especially. Well, not especially. Like, he was a kid who had really great friends and had a family that loves him. But it was still just as hard for him. So, like, that situation for anybody else is terrifying. Yeah. And it's a lot about that. It's just being true to yourself and, like, owing yourself the right just to be yourself and not hiding behind what other people think of you. And it's really good. All the acting was good. All the dialogue was, like, kind of realistic and kind of fun and playful. It was humorous. Um, I almost cried twice in the movie. Yes. Uh, It was both with the parents. Both the times the parents, like, found out. Uh, I, I just like they said something really nice, and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, his parents would love him. Yeah. But the whole. I never movie, knew my father. Yeah. <laughs> but it was kind of slice of life, kind of coming of age, kind of drama. It was all good stuff, man. It's pretty good. And it was I, a good romance as well. It had a lot of romance. I dig it. <laughs> I like I like the lead actor, so I, I was wanting to see him. What else has he been in? Um, so he got his start on a little sitcom called Melissa and Joey. Is that true? Starring, yeah, Melissa Joan Hart and Joey... Not Lawrence. Maybe it's Joey Lawrence. Joey Tribbiani. No, not Joey Tribbiani. Damn it. Um, but... He was also in Jurassic World. Yeah, he was. Which is nice. He was the kid in Jurassic World that nobody yeah. remembers. Nobody remembers. I don't remember. I especially don't remember his little brother in that movie. Oh God, his little brother! I can't even remember his face. <laughs> I can't remember his name. I can't. I can't remember that movie. I can't see him. God, I, where is he? I'm losing time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he is really good in this movie. I really do want to see more of him. I feel that. Um, most good. of the cast is pretty good. Um. Oh shit! Was it Jennifer Gardner who was the mom? I it think must, so. Yeah, yeah it was. That was that was surprising to see her in it, but she did really good too. Yeah, she's been getting a lot of motherly roles lately. She yeah. Was, um, uh, uh, the Odd Life of Timothy Green. She was the mom in um, Alex Horrible, Not So Good, Very Bad Day. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so she's been getting a lot of motherly roles lately. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, mm. She she wasn't in this movie a crazy a lot, but like the bits that she was in, she did really good. Um, the dad actor. I also don't know. I'm just going to look it up. He did really good. He, I, I, I thought he was just going to be like a generic dad, but he was also kind of really emotional. Yeah. And he, he has a real connection, and it was good chemistry and shit. Not bad. Um, but yeah, just a good time. It was, like, it's good because after, I mean, I guess not after seeing these movies, but, like, since most of the movies that we've seen recently have just been about whatever, it's nice to see a movie that means something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that actually has, like, a real purpose, as opposed to robots fighting each other over a volcano. Am I old it's now? Gross. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, 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 I think we're old. I guess I'm an old man. We're, you're 21, Adam. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'd give this movie a. You should go see it. It's really good. I I highly recommend. How? What's your rating on it? I give this movie. Uh, you should also go see it. You should come see it with me. Let's all go see it together. Yeah, let's all go see it together. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I actually want to see this movie. I'm yeah. very hyped. I'll see it again. Uh, it's, it's inspired me to be true to myself. Yeah, really? And being true to myself means taking another bite of my sandwich. No! Oh! Oh, he did it. Oh, God, it's disgusting. Blue! <laughs> anyway. Uh, so that's it for all the movies that we saw over the past two weeks. Unless you saw something else. Did you see Isle of Dogs without me? I did not, but you I'm a good son friend. Of a and I watch movies with you. No, that's nice. I don't even know if it's near us. Like, like we can see it near us. I really want to see that it's one. It's got to be out somewhere. Yeah, it's got to be. We should see it. Uh, anyway, now that all the movie reviews are done, yep. which did take a long time, I will my, uh, remind you. Yeah, we did three three movies and we're at yeah. an, hour, an hour. Holy crap. Yeah. So let's just talk about things we watched. You want to yeah. go first? I know you've been. You know what? I will go first. Oh damn it! I, 
Hi, everyone. I had a free weekend <gasps> where I did nothing <gasps> and I got to watch a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So what did I watch first? Mm-hmm. Let's... You know what? What I did watch first, actually, is I watched um, Beautiful Creatures. Which one was that? Beautiful Creatures is on Netflix. It's one of those young adult novel adaptations that was not good. That wasn't... So, that, the, what, was, that wasn't the City of Bones, eh? No, that wasn't City of Bones. City of Bones is Mortal Instruments. Beautiful <laughs> yeah, Creatures is right. Beautiful Creatures. <laughs> Was that the one with witches? Yeah. Okay, that's right. Um, so yeah, it didn't do good at all, so it didn't get a sequel. Hmm. But uh, it's it's hilarious in its own stupidity. Hmm. So first off, the really dumb thing is that so they're not called witches; they're <gasps> called casters. Okay, which that's, is a derogatory term. Okay, that's dumb. That's for podcasters. <laughs> And it was no yeah, so they're called casters, right? Mm-hmm. And the story is between this this boy. So of course it starts with that narration that you love so much. Mm. Except this one has a horribly forced um, southern accent, <laughs> where he's like, "I'm I'm from the county, and I can see her every day in my dreams." And then I wake up. So he starts off. He sees this girl in his dreams every night, right? Mm-hmm. But he can't see her face because the wind is blowing her hair in front of her, right? He wakes up and he's like, oh, school is starting now. I'm in my junior year of high school. Uh, my mom died. Never since my mom died, my dad literally hasn't come out of his room. No. Oh. You don't see the dad all the entire movie. Jesus. Literally, the dad does not come out of his room. Oh, man. They don't. The most mention you get to the dad is he comes home and he's like, dad, dad. And he's like, all right, you're probably in your room. And then he just leaves him alone. <laughs> Jeez. Um, you've got, and then like uh, this new girl transfers to the school mm-hmm. it's so forgettable I remember none of the characters name or none of the actresses mm-hmm. um, but it's got oh I know who it does have in it it's got Emma Thompson's not Emma Thompson her name is not Emma Thompson and forget it, it not Emma Thompson I know who she is she's the girl from um, Vampire Academy the yeah. main girl what's Vampire Academy Vampire Academy is a movie where vampires go to an academy I yes. go more into detail on it, but it was also a young adult novel that did not do very good mm-hmm. at any rate um, she plays this good wholesome Christian girl and she's like, oh, my mama says that, that, so, first of all, the new girl moves in, she's a Ravenwood. Mm-hmm. Ravenwoods are the founders of the town that they live in. Okay. So she's like, my, I, my mama heard that all the Ravenwoods are Satanists, and, mm-hmm. and they sacrifice things. And she's like, well, my mama heard that they're, that they all eat babies. Whoa. Um, and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, hijinks ensue when the little girl being a little witch Caster, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, I don't see color, it's 2018, um, ends up doing spells on them, so, like, at one point, they're making her really mad, and she gets so upset that all the windows in her classroom crash, mm. and the two girls making fun of her get really cut up really badly, mm. and the guy's like, well, it's pretty hot, Ugh. and he's <laughs> like, so I can't, that. and he's like, I came to check on you, uh, it's got Jeremy Irons in it, as oh, the man. protective guardian of the little girl. Mm-hmm. Um, the big thing about this movie that's that's weird and dumb is that the laws of casters, which I don't think is a thing in the book, but in the movie how they play it, is female casters on the 16th birthday when the moon shines on them, mm-hmm. they are either chosen to be either a good witch or an evil witch. Mm-hmm. Like it's just chosen for them based on their true nature. That's it? Yeah. Meanwhile, male casters can pick whatever side they want. Cool. But female casters, it's based on their true nature and chosen for them. It's really dumb and uh. it doesn't work uh-huh. because, like, so it ha- they explain how it happened with her cousin once, right? Mm. So her cousin specifically ran away because she was like, I feel myself turning dark and I don't want to hurt you. Like, you're my cousin. I love you. That there in and of itself is good. Uh And so for her to... For you to tell me that her true nature is still evil and she turns evil after that, I can't believe that. (laughs) It's not going to be believable. No. Um, Emma Thompson is in it, though. Oh, okay. She's she's really good. Hmm. Um, She plays um, the matriarch of the town, also slash the mother of our witch, because our witch's actual mom is so dark that she lives in the shadows oh. and can only appear in the physical realm by possessing people. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, I mean, the acting's all right. Um, it. Oh, one of their teachers has an eye patch for some reason that I'm sure is just never explained because they never got sequels. <laughs> I think it's amazing. That's funny. Um, and they have a character who's a seer. Uh, I don't remember her name, but she's on. Uh, how to get away with murder? 
Okay. Uh, and she plays their seer, hmm. and she's the keeper of the library of all the magical books oh. in the caster world. Oh. So yeah, it's it's pretty it's it's pretty all right. Um, it was fun to laugh at and just watch things that are just so laughably just like <laughs> that's stupid and <laughs> disgusting. Uh, that's funny. Oh yeah. Hmm. All right, you, your turn. What did you watch? Uh, I watched Sing from Illumination Studios. The makers of Minions, and I'm sure other movies. Yeah, it's talking animals in a singing competition. Um, I watched this because I just... I didn't w- want to watch anything like mm. that meant anything. I just want to... Because mostly I actually wanted to watch this because I wanted to know if it was good. Because I'm not sure if I like Illumination Studios yet or not. Because the Despicable Me movies were good. Um, the Minions movies wasn't. Mm. Life of Pets was at and just boring. Mm. Um... And I, I just remember the trailers for this movie just being the bunnies singing that dumb song about, oh my god, look at her butt. Uh, oh and that's god. the way they chose to advertise this movie. And after watching it, I'm just so frustrated that it's about talking animals. Because if it wasn't, it would have been really solid. I'm not, I don't think it would have been like amazing. Like I don't think it would have blown people away. But it really would have been something. Because, like, if it was just, like, animated humans, it really could have been a really good movie. There's so many moments where I'm just like, why the fuck is this a porcupine? Why is this lady a llama? <laughs> why can't they just be normal? Because it's a pretty good story about, like, I don't know, just doing what you love no matter what people say. And, sure, like, sometimes it doesn't make any sense because Matthew McConaughey playing a koala bear is actually an asshole. Wait, that was Matthew McConaughey? Yeah, Matthew McConaughey plays a koala bear. He's actually a better voice actor than I thought he would be. What? Um, In the beginning, he does a... He does, like, a prologue, and it's just a voiceover, and it sounds just like Matthew McConaughey, and I'm like, okay, is he just gonna be, like, a koala bear that sounds like Matthew McConaughey? Because that doesn't work together. Yeah. And he actually does a pretty good job. Like, there's a bunch of times where I didn't think it was Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know, he was talking about the lead, right? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that was Matthew McConaughey at all. Yeah. Um, who else is in it? Scarlett Johansson is in it. She does a really great job and she's a great singing voice. Mm -hmm. Um, oh shit. Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon. Also good. Tori Kelly. Tori Kelly, yes. Um, fuck, who's the other one? Um, John C. Riley's in it, but he doesn't sing. He's just in it and he's good. Uh, Kai from Parks and Rec. Norm, no, what is it? Uh, Nick off Nick Offerman. Nick that's off. it. Yeah, he has a bit role in it. Um, it was a really good cast. Everybody did a really good job. Uh, singing wise, it was really great. Um, but I thought the story was going to be so by the numbers and boring, but it was actually really good. Like I really found myself enjoying this movie, and I just really sad that for one, they kind of wasted it on a talking animal yeah. movie that has nothing to do with the entire movie. Like, there's not a part in it There's like, these people have to be talking animals for this to make sense. It has nothing to do with anything. Not like Zootopia or anything. But, not only that, I'm just mad that they advertise this in a really shitty and stupid way. Yeah. With the dumb bunnies, oh my god, look at her butt thing. Over and over and over again. And every time you saw the trailer, it was just the bunnies with the butt thing. <laughs> And it was actually a really well-told story. I mean, I, I think people should check this out. There's something here. It's yeah, pretty well. okay. It's a good animated movie. It wasn't nominated for an Oscar or anything, because the Oscars suck ass. <sighs> yeah. That's I mean, it. I mean, can they really? I mean, Boss Baby, though. Boss Baby. Well-deserved nomination. Oh, God. Uh, I wonder when Sing came out. Was it two years ago? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Do you have anything else? So I, I, I watched. Uh, I watched uh, a little movie called Cars Three. Oh yeah, that's right. You uh, said Cars Three. Re- Revenge, Revenge of the Tomatoes. Yeah. Um, actually, a lot better than I thought it would be. It's much better than the second <clears throat> one. That's for sure. So, uh, oh, definitely, so much better than the second one. Yeah. So here's the thing with the Cars movies. I actually like the first Cars movie. Thought it was fine. I like it too. I liked it a lot. Um, it was a solid story. Uh, and then the second Cars movie came out, and it was stupid. It was really bad. It was Mater's Great Spy yeah, Adventure. Yeah, it was all about Mater, and I guess he's a spy, and there are lemons, and Lightning McQueen's on a World Grand Prix, but yeah. like... Thankfully, they don't bring it up in this movie. Yeah, they don't bring in it up the at all. the third one, they never yeah, bring it up. Yeah, you know what's weird? I'm pretty sure Mater has a girlfriend from the second movie. They don't talk about yeah, her at all. Yeah, she's dead. She yeah. died in a horrible... Wait, what did they call her? Call car accidents? And... I know. 
Just normal accidents? Yeah, I guess it's normal. An accident. <laughs> um, no, but yeah. Uh, and then you have Cars 3, which gets back to the story and puts the focus where it should be mm. on their main character, Lena McQueen. Yeah. Who, who's Owen Wilson, that's it. Yeah, Owen Wilson. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 pretty it's pretty good for the most part. So the movie itself deals with it's been it's been a few years. Um been a, a good a good few years since Cars Two. Uh well, since Cars One. Well even since Cars Two. Uh and it's been so long that there's a new generation of racers coming out. Lenny McQueen is part of the old generation. M- meanwhile I'll have you Lightning McQueen is a champ. He he's like got a record or something for racing and stuff like that. He's one of the best racers they have. Mm. Um, but you have these this new character named Jackson Storm, and he's just a new, like better type of car. Mm. He's made for better wind resistance. He's made for less friction. He's just made everything is made to be optimal. Mm-hmm. So in that being said, he can go about I think like. 50 or 20 miles per hour faster on average than Lightning McQueen. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't sound like much, but it makes all the difference. And so Lightning McQueen, as more and more cars like Jackson Storm get put on the track, Lightning McQueen gets like, he starts um, getting lower and lower in the poles and losing like by a wider and wider margin. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, Until eventually, you know that thing, they have the photorealistic trailer where it's like, everything from here changes. Uh, I was think, fucking. Yeah. I absolutely love that trailer. That yeah. actually might be one of my favorite trailers, just because of how fucking ridiculous it is. I was even in the context of this movie, it's so outlandish. Where you think he actually died I, or got crippled in a horrible way. I love it. In this moment, everything, everything changes. And I, I guess, but Jesus Christ, kids are watching this. Quite literally, nothing changes. I mean, yeah, it does. I mean, like, now now he has to... Like, I, it kind of I mean, changes, but it's not like he killed someone or something. Like, yeah, well, it changes, like, on, like, he has to go on a journey now. But, like, he crashes, mm-hmm. and then it's cut to four months later, he's already okay. Uh, yeah, in the sense that he's fine physically. Yeah. yeah but, like, career-wise, it did was, it oh, was yeah, a big career-wise, change. it's like, yeah. This movie had a pretty interesting theme, which was that something, like... Uh, Disney just really doesn't explore, uh, especially with their happily ever after like theme in every single fucking movie. It's that you can't do what you love forever, yeah. And eventually, you're gonna have to change. And even if you're good at something, you're not gonna be the best forever. And you have to learn to adapt to the world around you. And that's pretty fucking heavy for a Cars movie. So here's the thing about that, though. Yeah, we're going to spoilers, by the way. Yeah, I mean, sure. The this whole movie theme came out a while ago. about like. You can't do what you love forever, except you can. I mean, he didn't. You no, know, he does. No, he doesn't race. No, he becomes, he still races. He races and he coaches. I don't... He does both. He says at the at the end, he does say that. And I think that was really stupid that they put that in. Yeah. he could have just been a coach. Yeah. he's just like, no, I'm still going to race. I thought it would have been But great. I'm going to do this fucking my way. And then yeah. he gets a paint job. But, yeah, I really think, like, if he just became a coach, that's yeah. solid. That's a good way to end it. I thought it was really good. I think, if not for Cars 2, this would be a solid franchise. Yeah. It'd be solid, good two I, movies. I'm pretty sure this is the end of the two. Yeah, it's gotta be. Just and I don't know why this it. was the Pixar franchise that got three installments and two spinoffs. But, two spinoffs? Yeah, the Planes ones. Oh, I shit. I mean, those weren't done by Pixar, but... Yeah, yeah but are was, they set in the Cars universe? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, they Planes... In cars, <laughs> but um, yeah, it. I like the theme. Uh, yeah. it was it was a pretty solid movie. I thought it was fine. I just like I, my favorite part is the bit where he ends up going back to like Doc's old, old hometown yeah. and meets all the old racers and gets trained with them. And yeah, I think it's really cool. Yeah, I thought that was really neat. I'm glad that um, Paul Newman was the voice of the of Doc Hudson, right? I believe so. Yeah, he, I'm glad that they really focused on the fact that like that character died because yeah. in the second one it was just like if only Doc was here to see this what happened to that guy yeah <laughs> and they only imply that he's dead but yeah. this one it seems like it really had an impact on him yeah. like he was his coach and trainer and inspi- about it. inspiration and everything but um what was I gonna say oh the one thing I didn't like about that movie though is that it has a villain towards the end mm-hmm. does not need it the villain being um the manager that Lightning McQueen had, who like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna fund, I'm a billionaire, and I'm gonna fund everything because I believe in you and your brand. Um, 
that guy could have just actually believed in Lightning McQueen. He didn't need to become an asshole at the end. Because at the end, he's just like, what are you doing here? What was the girl's name? It was uh, Cruz, Cruz, right? Cruz Ramirez. Yeah. What are you doing here, Cruz? You're a trainer. Get back to work. It's a Saturday, and it's 9 p.m. <laughs> what do you mean? I can just be here. Like, he just became a straight-up asshole yeah. for no reason. He could have just been like, all right, go. Like, if that if this is good for the brand, this is what Lightning wants. I believe yeah. in his, I ju- trust his judgment. And then some billionaire buys his company yeah. at the end just so, like, they could keep racing. Yeah, Tex. I mean, he's been... He, he was in the first movie. Yeah, I mean, I don't uh, mind Tex, but, like... He, but, it was something like, I used all my money to buy your company. Yeah. All my fucking money. Oh, uh, you remember when Dynica was a thing? Yeah, I like Dynica. Like, they had a cool relationship, too, with Lightning. Yeah. Just like, hey, if you ever want to be, like, the head of Dynica, just let us know. And the head of Dynica was just like, oh God, guys, I'm come on. Here. Come Stop. on, guys. Like, it hurts my feelings. Just be nice. No, I do like the, that they have that montage that shows all the camaraderie in the race cars. So they yeah. have, like, the, the pranks and stuff like that. Yeah, like, over the years, they've been having a good time. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. So, like, that was his run. It's really nice. And, yeah, my favorite part is when he gets his paint job and he becomes the fabulous Lightning McQueen. I hated that. Really? I thought that was so... So fucking stupid. I think it's a lot. What is the equivalent of that in the human world? Like, you just start wearing a dead guy's clothes? That's really weird, dude. He's paying homage to his, like, his, like, dad. I don't think, like, I, you're not wearing not a dead dad. guy's clothes. I mean, it's a It's his mentor, no. It's his mentor. Yeah, I get like, that, but, like, just just have fabulous Lightning McQueen on the side. Don't go blue. It's weird. No, what do you mean? I like the blue. I don't like it. It's I just a color. It looks so weird to me. It's, it's actually just a color. Yeah. Um. I, I like Cruz's new colors, though, where she got the blue. Oh, yeah. The... I just hate that she didn't have the 76 or whatever Lightning's number was. I oh, thought... well, because Lightning still has his number. Yeah. She gets that, Doc's number. That's what I kept forgetting, that he still races. Yeah. Which is so stupid. So she gets the 51, which is Doc's old number, mm-hmm. and he's like, Lightning felt you should have it, and he keeps the 95. Mm-hmm. Because even though he owns both of them, mm-hmm. she races for Dynaco and he races for Rusty's. Yeah. But I don't know how that would work. I don't know either. They're both owned by the same person, but they're still racing. I don't know. I, I don't even know why he would race, because Cruz has always been better than him. I don't know. Just, if he had just become like her personal coach, I thought it would have been amazing. It would have been great. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Anyway, Cars is probably over now, right? Yeah. I hope so. It was an alright movie. I dig it. It was fine. Maybe watch it if you can. It's yeah. on Netflix. So. Especially if you have kids, watch it with your kids. Yeah, and if do you that. saw the first movie and you liked it, I think you'll like this one too. There's also Minimal Mater. That's pretty nice. Yeah, there was He's not only a there lot just as much as he should be. Oh, thank God. Oh, oh thank God. I'm Larry the Cable Guy. Oh, my God. Eat Protestant. Um, I hear Larry the Cable Guy isn't even like. I hear that guy's British. I, that's not even his real name. Like, no, Larry the Cable Guy is an entire like, character. Like, the guy himself is like British and like, know, talks like that. And I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. Um, anyway, there's well, more sandwich. No, I'm no. Uh, I'll talk about my thing now. Well, I I binged Voltron, the last three seasons of Voltron, three through five. Um, I didn't think it was as good as it was, but you, no, I didn't think it was going to be as good as it was, is what I meant to say. The first season of Voltron was whatever. Second one was a little better. It's a really good show now. Um, I'm, I told you about this a lot, but um, it's a really good story. Got great characters. Um, they're not as willing to kill characters off as they should be, but I guess that's just because it's still like an animated show. So, but there are a few characters that definitely should have died. <laughs> um, and once you watch that, you'll probably know who. Um, they, it, it does seem like a show that knows where it's going and it's keep pushing towards that as opposed to staying in the same space. Um, it's really fun. It's a lot of good, good stuff there. Good action. Some good character growth. Ooh. A lot of fun jokes. Yeah. Animation. Tell me more. That's it. That's all I had. <laughs> uh, do you have something else? Because I have a few more things. Um, I have, I have the one last thing I watched okay. over this weekend. Yeah, uh, I binged the third season of The Librarians. Third season? I yeah. honestly thought there was one. No. So, I, so for those of you who don't know, The Librarians is um, it's a plot about this, um, this magical place called The Library that holds magical artifacts that should not get into the hands of evil people. Right. Um, started off, um, I think, in like the, the 90s with three movies called The Librarian starring Noel Weiler as Flynn Carson. And now the series is a jumpstart off that where they introduce three new people who have now become librarians, or librarians in training, because technically there's only supposed to be one librarian 
at a time. Mm. But they have a few new people and a new guardian. It's really cool. Um, my favorite thing about the library franchise is that if you didn't know better, you'd think it was based off of a series of books. Yeah. Even even the way the, the episodes are titled, it's always titled The Librarians and The Fangs of Death or oh, something cool. like that. They're like all titled that. that way, and I think it's really cool. Um, and so the characters are, are really awesome. Um, they have uh, three characters, my favorite character being Cassandra Killian. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's very cool. Her thing is she has a tumor in her head. Um, that is cool. Yeah. Well, the thing about this tumor is it's eventually going to grow one day and be terminal and kill her. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, it gives her, like, she's one of the smartest people in the world. Oh, it's just like that one movie. The one with John Travolta. You know what I'm talking about, right? He has a tumor. Crease? What? No, it's Crease. <laughs> There's uh, that movie that John Travolta was in where he gets a tumor in his head and makes him super smart and gets to Battlefield Earth. That's yeah. it, it was Battlefield Earth. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I don't watch John Travolta movies. Uh, no, but it's and that's it's really cool. And they've got characters like they have characters who are immortal. Char- they deal with with people like um, like Duloc and Galahad and Lancelot and mm-hmm. things like the Loom of Fate. And it's a, it's a really cool show, mm-hmm. and I like it. I think you should watch it. I think that's actually I like that premise. Just like yeah. we're gonna go around and collect magic. Who's yeah. with me? I am. That sounds like fun. I might watch it. It's really fun. I could check it out. What else? What else did I watch? I saw Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because I might do a video on that. Because that movie's just fucking stupid. It's just... Did I talk to you about it? I did, right? Yeah, I heard yeah, it. hurt my feelings a little bit. It's stupid. Why did I hurt your feelings? I like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Watch it again. I thought I liked it too. Fine, I'll I saw, watch it right now. I saw, no. Two hours later. Oh, God, I was wrong. It's terrible. Because <laughs> I watched it as a kid and I thought it was fine. Uh, and I remembered, like, yeah, it was a really interesting way to take the character. Yeah. It's just, why did they even remake it? Because the things that, like, most of it, they don't change. And it's almost the same movie. The things that they do change are stupid. Where Willy Wonka's a creeper now. And he has daddy issues that get resolved in, like, a really stupid and shitty way. Where he just goes to his dad's house and they hug without exchanging that many words. It was useless. It was boring. And then they change the ending. To make it longer for some reason, even though it's a long ass movie. And they just wrap it up in like 15 minutes after they do that. Ah, makes me frustrated. Yeah. And after. Oh, I also saw Cool Runnings. That's. Have you ever seen Cool Runnings? No, I don't know. It's, it's one of those like 90s Disney movies that just came out because they just were pumping up shit. Oh, like Jungle to Jungle! Eh. Jungle to Jungle was a, a 90s movie uh, starring Tim Allen where he played the dad of this kid yes. on like a remote island. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot like one of those. Okay, but this cool. one's like, it's supposed to be inspirational. It's about the Jamaican bobsled team. Is it based on a true story? I didn't check. It probably <laughs> isn't. Um, it's, it's just about, it's a really weird theme. So it's about a kid who is, whose dad was an Olympic runner from Jamaica. And his dad is dead, and now he wants to become an Olympic runner, right? But at the tryouts, he trips and eats shit. <laughs> so <laughs> he's disqualified immediately, and that sucks ass because he has to wait four years. So because he didn't get in, in his mind, he changes the goal for his life to, I no longer want to become an Olympic runner like my father, to... I just need to get into the Olympics in any capacity. So he finds out there's this guy who offered his dad to join the first ever Jamaican bobsledding team because sprinters make really good bobsledders. And he's like, that's my ticket to the Olympics. What is bobsledding? Bobsledding is the one where it's four people in a cart and they're just pushed down a a slide made out of ice in the Winter Olympics. How are sprinters better than that name anyone else? Because you need to take off from the start. So the faster you go at the start, the faster you go throughout the entire race. Okay. So they find the guy and they gr- grab a team of four people and they go to the Olympics and fulfill his dream. It's a really important moral lesson, Josh. If you have a dream and it doesn't work out, Change Just it slightly. Change the fucking dream. Just make it way more generic than dream it should be. Dream a better dream. Dream something, but don't be specific about it. Just instead of being, my dad went to the Olympics and got a gold medal in sprinting, so I want to do the same. Just be, I also want to be at a Olympics. Just remember. Generic. It's okay to settle. I don't want to be the best YouTuber. YouTuber. I just want to be on the internet in some capacity. I made a Facebook page and I am fulfilled. <laughs> I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, I, 
I have a Twitter. <laughs> I have a Twitter follow. I have one follower. Good enough. Yeah. Did I just watch anything else? Probably not, right? Probably not. Are you checking your list? Yeah, I have a list. He has a list, everyone. What a nerd! Oh God, everyone point laughing at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. Anything else? Um, not much. Um, Are you gonna watch anything? Am I gonna watch anything? Ooh, well, you know, I actually right now in the middle of watching the second season of Rosewood. Hmm. Um, it's a shame because it's actually been canceled. Uh, but I did like that show because it's it's a Fox show, and so Fox only does crime procedurals now. Yeah. And they're always the same kind. You have the by the books cop, and you have their partner who's not a cop; it's a consultant, but they're they're quirky. So you got like Lucifer, Sleepy Hollow, <laughs> Bones was really the first one they had on yeah. their channel, the only one that really did good. Mm-hmm. Rosewood I like because the character of Rosewood is just so goddamn charismatic, <laughs> and then, and then the other character, her name is Annalise Villa. Mm. She's just the love of my life. Aww. She's beautiful. Is oh Rosewood a man or a woman? Rosewood is a man. Okay. Rosewood is... What makes him Rosewood? He he is Dr. Beaumont Rosewood Jr. Mm. He's a pathologist. Mm-hmm. And he he's basically Bones, but he's not... He doesn't work for a lab. He's an independent pathologist. I see. Um, but he's really cool. His thing is he's actually fascinated with life and death. Mm. Because he himself has a bunch of fucking internal problems... Like he's a super huge physically fit man, but his his organs are, are they're, they're they're held together by duct tape, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 one inch away from death at any given moment. That's really cool. There was a crime show with David Tennant that was kinda like that, where he oh. had like a heart condition so he really couldn't push himself that hard. Is it Broadchurch? Yeah, that's it. I gotta start watching Broadchurch. I like Broadchurch. I Church. heard it was good. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got some David Tennant and he's yeah. he's the best. He's yeah. the best in the business. So you know what? That's actually a really cool show. We actually have a clip of it. Let's show it. Alright. Oh, what's that? Huh? Oh, they're, they're telling me this is an audio-only podcast. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, sorry, folks. Um, hmm. If you want to see the clip, um, um, just go on YouTube and look up Broadchurch. Yeah, look it up yourself. It'll be one of those clips. Yeah. Uh, you can find them. It's probably the first or second. Um, Click and, on the one that doesn't say add. Yeah. It'll be um, that one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right, um, uh, did you see a trailer for that show that might already be out I don't fucking know it's called Deception it's on ABC oh that show it's about, about the magician it's about a magician that yeah. joins the cops are you fucking kidding me <laughs> I don't that know is like if I it. had to make a show that would be like the first thing that comes to my mind yeah what if a magician became a cop and solved mysteries yeah alright god you know how what? did we not do that already I have absolutely no idea well they had the mentalist the mentalist was a thing yeah that's gotta be the same thing yeah right? god you- <laughs> I really thought, like, this is a show that we've done several times, where just a magician becomes a cop. Do you know what they? I never watched that they had? Uh, Houdini and Doyle? Mm. Which is a show about Arthur Kenan Doyle and Harry Houdini, and they solve the mysteries. Fuck yes, Set dude. in the Victorian era. Are you kidding me? It Absolutely. A thing. And, and Houdini plays the skeptic. Mm. He's the one that's like, supernatural and ghosts aren't real, and Arthur Kenan Doyle plays the guy who's like, yes, they are. Wow. I really like that. Uh, I remember only seeing the first episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I think I thought Arthur Kando's character was really stupid mm-hmm. um, because he goes to a psychic to talk to his wife who's in a coma. Uh-huh. He realizes the psychic is lying to him <gasps> and his his thing to get around that, he just goes to a different psychic. Oh, yeah. He's like, well, she was a bad one. <laughs> I'm going to get a new one. Yeah. He has a better future in mind. Oh, my God. But, but yeah, I, I, maybe I should give it another try. I, I, it's on Hulu, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So it's probably an okay show. Yeah. Unless which it's one, not. Which one? Who do you mean, Doyle? Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's, that sounds funny, though. Yeah. When are we going to start, like, doing more of that? Where instead of based on true stories, we just take historical figures and make shit up about them. Oh, I want to watch more of those because, things. Because that would be fun. Like, Albert Einstein solves yeah. crimes. That's what, that's what Rain was. Rain was historical fiction. Oh, uh, yeah. So, if you don't know, Rain was uh, a TV show about Mary, uh, the Queen of Scotland, mm-hmm. um, back in the old days. And it, it deals with uh, her marriage to King Francis of France and his death and then her continued marriage and her trying to take over England and her not being able to take over England. Yes. And Nostradamus is in it. So, here's I'm looking this up because here's my one thing about it that right. I love. Uh-huh. So, the series ends. So, in real life, Mary, Queen of Scots, was executed. Yeah. Uh, she was beheaded. Uh-huh. Um, they do that in Rain. Mm. In Rain, um, like it's like in season four, um, her first love died in like season two. So she gets executed, mm. and like you see the axe come down out of frame, and then it cuts to white, and then she wakes up in heaven with Francis, who's like her love. 
right? Yeah. And they start running in fields and they're laughing. They're like, we're together forever. I love you. Ha ha ha. Mm. Happy ending. That's not at all how it went down. <laughs> if you look up in history, Mary, Queen of Scots, uh-huh. all right, her execution went terrible. Oh, jeez. The executioner was drunk. No. So the first time he swung down the axe, he missed her neck. No. And hit her in the back of the head, no. lodging the axe into it. No. He then had to pull the axe out. And then it took him a couple more tries to actually get her neck. That is the worst. Once he got her head off, he picked her up by her hair, not knowing she was wearing a wig. Her head fell out of the wig Jeez. and rolled out into the audience. And oh my that... god, I watched that show for four seasons hoping to see that, and I didn't get it, and I was so disappointed. <laughs> I really I needed so to see that. I thought they were going to go full crazy. I was like, oh my god, that's amazing. That is hilarious. I mean, it's not. It's terrifying, uh, but in the context of Yeah, it's but in the context of a show, I was like, oh god, I need to see this I think, now. I think historical fiction might be the next big genre that we're going to get, where yeah. it's just like dumb shit that never happened but we're gonna say happened because yeah. it's funnier I can't wait yeah not not like crazy enough like Albert or er, Abraham Lincoln like becoming a vampire hunter but just like shit that could have happened but yeah didn't. <laughs> uh, mostly it's just gonna be historical historical figure solving mysteries because that shit's funny <laughs> <laughs> uh, if they did that in rain all the time they'd be like with mm-hmm. any luck this entire event will be erased from history <laughs> and I'm like ha huh, you you're not slick <laughs> you're not slick uh yeah maybe like a like uh, Winston Churchill goes to war and like Ooh. saves Dunkirk himself. Yeah, I love that. I'm into it. We're doing it. Anyway, we should probably mm. wrap it up. Yeah. Um, um, last thing about librarians, if you like Doctor Who, you'll probably like it. Yeah. This is Jogma Marie. That's... It has a theme that's eerily similar to the Doctor Who theme where it's like bum 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 And the character of uh, Flynn Carson is eerily similar to the Doctor. Oh, that's cool. Cool. I might check it out. Yeah. So before we wrap up, I have something to plug, Josh, because mm-hmm. I actually made something. For Ooh, us. you made something? Ironically, Ooh. it is a video that I call Make Something. Mm. It's an animation kind of deal, more of an animatic, a storyboard animation, if you will, or story time animation. Um, it's not that funny. It's not that inspirational or motivational. Uh, it's a personal story, but it's not really relatable. But I made it, so you should watch it. It's on Adam Underscore's YouTube, at Adam Underscore, and it's called Make Something. Watch it if you have three minutes to kill. It'll bring you joy. That's me plugging my thing. And I, I also have something that I made. Liar! It's the sandwich! No! No! That would have been a funny way to end the episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold now. Oh, that's oh. sad. You'll have to reheat it. Yeah. You don't reheat bread. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. Well, yeah, you're probably right. Are we not done with the episode? Uh, we could wrap up right now. Um, you want more? Yeah, we just have to see what's happening next week. Oh, my bad. Hurry up. I'm just going to talk <laughs> for you. It's okay. Okay. Uh, next week, we've got Ready Player One happening. Yeah! And we will list every single reference to another property that that movie makes. No! <laughs> every 562... Make a promise you can't keep, buddy. We will time code each one. Count your chickens before they hatch. <laughs> uh, and hopefully I'll see Isle of Dogs by that, that by then. That would yeah. be fun, right? You see that too. I'm down. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, anyway, uh, I'm Adam underscore, and you do your name now. I'm, I'm Josh the Squash. And together... We are... The end of the pot... I didn't know where this was going. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Flock of Idiots. Oh, we are... We're the Flock, Flock of Idiots. Podcast. What? Dude, this is a podcast. We're not the... Okay, but we time. are the flock of idiots. All right, one more time. Let's go. Okay. Okay. We we are the, the flo- flock cast. Of what, dude? I I thought I we were gonna do your thing now. <laughs> I was gonna do your thing. Yeah. Okay. You know what? The podcast is over.